I've had my Kindle Scribe for a full year and I wanted to give my review on it. So I did do a review on the Kindle Scribe a few months ago, but there were some key things that I left out of that video. And I've gotten some questions from you all that I hopefully will answer today in this video. If you missed that first video where I go into a lot of details, please go watch that one. I will link it down below for you. In this video, I'm gonna go over some other things that I left out. So one of those being PDFs. So this was something that I did not look into last time. And so I didn't really have a lot of knowledge and I didn't want to talk about it then. But now, since you guys have asked about it more, I started exploring it and looking into it. And I'm actually really grateful and thankful to you all for asking me about it because it got me to play around with it and to learn about it. And I've been using Canva to create my own documents, to create a planner and it's a lot of fun to create my own things, download them and put them into my Kindle device. So I use the Scent to Kindle on my web browser and it's really easy. You just have to select the files from your device and you can upload them and download them into your Kindle. It works really well. It's very responsive. If you've created a really nice planner spread for yourself, you can zoom in and zoom out and you can write everything that you need to write. And like I said, the one that I've been creating, it's not perfect. I used lighter colors and that's not the best thing to use with the Kindle. So if you're going to create any sort of documents, just make sure to use black because that's what's going to show up the best on your Kindle device. So just make sure to do that and it'll look a lot better on your device than it does on mine. Just to recap, I do have the Kindle Scribe. This is a 10 inch screen. I do believe this is the biggest Kindle device out right now. And I have the premium pencil. This is the one where you could erase with the bottom of it like an actual eraser, um, but you don't need to get this one. They do have just the regular one that you can erase with the tip just like any other pencil. So that's the one that I have. And I think I have just the standard storage size on here. I still have a lot of storage available. It's kind of funny, like how much I still have available on my device. There is another thing that I discovered and that's that you could change the layout of the pages. So you go here, you click layout, and you can actually have two pages at once. So you have to change the orientation. And then from here, you click the two columns. And there you go. So another thing I wanted to talk about was library books. I had mentioned in my previous video that I can put library books into my Kindle device and I had some of you asking about that, how I do that. So the way that I do it, I have a library card from my local library and hopefully this is available everywhere. I'm not really sure about other countries, but I know in the US, hopefully every library system has this for you. And getting a library card was really easy for me too. I didn't even have to go to the library. I just did everything online. So hopefully you can do that in your area too, where you can just go online, request your library card and um, have it be mailed out to you. Hopefully that's how I did it. So you can just check your local library to see how things work out there. Then I downloaded the Libby app. And then with the Libby app, you just input all of your library card information. And then from there, you have so many options and books available to you. So the way that I think it works, because it goes through all different library systems. So I know for me, we have a certain amount of books available. One of the downsides to this is that, let's say you're trying to check out a really popular book, there's gonna be a lot of people waiting in line. So the downside is you're gonna have to wait a few weeks before you can check out your book. You know, sometimes that can not be the best because I know when you wanna read a book, you wanna read it right away and you don't wanna wait, but that is something that you would have to do when using the Libby app, you'll just have to wait your turn. And let's say there's 10 copies of a book, but there's 30 people waiting in line. 
you'll have to wait your turn. It'll let you know when the book is available and you do only have, I think maybe like two or three days to accept the book. If not, it's gonna move on to the next person. So that's another thing you have to be aware of. Just make sure that you have your notifications on for that to make sure that you can check out your books in time and you don't lose your turn. And you only have 21 days to read your book and then it's gonna go on to the next person. And especially if there is like a long wait and there's a lot of people waiting, it is going to move on to the next person and you'll have to borrow it again and just place it on hold and wait your turn out in that way. So that can be a downside having to wait, but it's also not that big a deal. And it's really great to be able to just check out the books through your library. And they also have audiobooks. So the way that you get these books onto your Kindle device you borrow the book. So just an example, let's say I wanna borrow this book by Jeanette McCurdy, I'm Glad My Mom Died. You click borrow. And then from there, you click open book. And then here it's gonna give you the option, you could open it through just the Libby app and just read it through there, or you can click the Kindle side. So when you do that, it's gonna take you to your Amazon account. And then you just click get library book. And sometimes I know in the past, because we've had different Amazon devices, just make sure that you're sending your ebook to the right device. That way it doesn't get lost. And I think it would be really hard to like switch it to a different device, I think. So just make sure you name it something that you recognize. That way you can get your book and be able to read it. And then from there, it just sends it over to your Kindle. It's that easy, it downloads, it's really quick and it's really just wonderful. It makes me so happy that I could check out library books. I hope that that helps and answers any questions that you all have had. Let me know if you have any more questions down below. Now let's move on to the pencil. This was something that I did not mention last time, but you do have, I'm, I'm gonna talk about the pencil and notebooks actually. So you do have different pencil options. So when you go into a notebook, you do have different pencils to choose from. So you just have like the regular pen, you have the fountain pen, which is my personal favorite, and you have a marker and then you have a pencil. Now with the fountain pen, there isn't really any pressure sensitivity to it. It only ever does, the upstroke is a very thin line and then the downstroke is a little bit thicker. So this fountain pen is actually really good for calligraphy, which I love. It's my favorite pen option to use when writing because it just writes really beautifully. But then when you use the pencil, you do have a little more pressure control with this one. So if you do really light pressure, you get very, very light strokes. So this would be really great for someone who's trying to draw and create very light strokes. And then if you push a little harder, it creates thicker and darker strokes. So that's also something that I didn't mention the first time, but I really felt like it was important to mention in case you are someone who loves to draw or wants to have that versatility, the pencil does have that, which I find to be really cool to just like do little doodles and stuff like that. But I'm sure someone who's like an actual artist, you could for sure create some really good drawings. Then I had someone else ask me about being able to organize your notebooks and you definitely can. There are folders that you can set up and organize. So let's say you're a student, you have different subjects that you want to have notebooks for and you wanna be able to organize them. You definitely can, you can create different folders, put different names to them and organize things a lot better. That way you can have just everything in in where it needs to be and it's easier for you to find. Also, I had someone ask me if you can email some of these notebooks to yourself and print them out and you certainly can. So this was another thing that I was playing around with. You can email your notes to yourself and then from there, if you have them downloaded onto your phone, you can print them out if you have a printer. Also, what I've discovered is if you download the Kindle app on your phone, you can actually look at 
your notebooks. So it shows you all of your notebooks. And so let's say you wrote something down and you can't remember and you don't have your Kindle device near you, you can check all of your notes and everything here through your phone and it shows it really beautifully. So that was also another thing that I just found really helpful and just such a cool feature that they added. It's just a really nice thing to have that you can just check all of your stuff and have everything on your phone as well as your Kindle device. You can look at your PDF here as well, but for some reason it doesn't show any of the things that I wrote down. So I don't know if maybe I have to change the settings or something like that, but it does just show me the PDF and I can zoom in and zoom out but it doesn't show the things that I wrote on it. So maybe there's some other, maybe there's some other thing that I have to fix with that. So I have to play around with that myself to figure it out. The app is just really cool. It shows you how many times you pick up your device and all of that stuff. So I highly recommend downloading the app along with your Kindle device and it's gonna be really helpful to have both things at the same time. And also you could send stuff through the app as well. I just haven't done it that way. I prefer to just use the Send to Kindle on my desktop and that's what I use to send stuff over to my device. And I just find it to be a little bit easier, but you can do it through your phone as well. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is that you do have Goodreads through your Kindle device. And that was another thing that I did not mention in the other video. You can log in to your Goodreads and have it linked up to your Kindle device. That way when you finish a book, you can just rate it really quickly. You can keep track of everything that you're reading and you can also see reviews from other people. It has everything all in one. I really do enjoy my Kindle device so much. The battery life is amazing. Like I mentioned in my previous video, it's still, amazing today. I charged it after making that video and it's still on that charge. I'm not even joking. It's still going strong. It is at 20%. I do have to charge it again, but it's doing really well. I just highly recommend this if you are looking to get a new e-reader. I know it's a little bit bigger and I do see the other Kindles and they do look really cute. They look really cute. They're smaller, but I just, I love the screen size of this because it just gives me like an actual full page of a book. Being able to write on this is a lot better too with the screen size. So I love this device very much. Also make sure to check Amazon pretty frequently because I do see this device go on sale or be discounted. And so you don't have to pay full price for it. Just wait for one of those days where it goes down in price and it'll be a much better deal for you. And you can have everything all in one. This is like perfect for a student too, because you can like put all of your documents, studying, notebooks, like everything onto here and it makes it really great. And you can also personalize the screen. I know I've seen videos on that. I haven't personally done it yet, but I know it can be done through Canva, just doing like a black and white design. And you can customize your home screen here, which I also think is a really cool and neat thing. I haven't done it myself yet, but I will be doing it very soon. That is my review. I hope that I've answered all of your questions. If you want more details, check out the first video that I did because I go more into details about the Kindle Scribe that I did not mention today. But I really hope that I've answered all of your questions. If there's anything else that you guys want to know, please let me know down below. Subscribe to my channel and please like this video and I will see you all next time. Bye!